Hi, I'm Hans Peter Meyer, and uh, today I'm talking with Tom Deschlevoy, an architect here in the town, of, well, in the town of Comox, but a private practice. Um, Tom, how long have you been in the Comox Valley? Just coming up on 12 years now. Mm -hmm. And what brought you here? Totally lifestyle. We uh, were living in Vancouver, and uh, and we had a great opportunity, and always loved the island. We've got the mountain, the golf courses, the the water. It was uh, it was just it perfectly represented our, our young lifestyle. We had a small daughter and um, just thought this was the place to uh, to raise her. Right, and you've got two kids now? Had another one while we were here, so it's fairly fertile valley too. <laughs> and um, uh, as part of this, like, thank you for participating in the 3 by 2 by 8 conversation. Uh, our intention is to ask everybody three questions. Uh, trying to pick a representation from the various eight pillars of sustainability, and I'm talking to you because you, because of your knowledge about the built environment. So you've had a look at the uh, sustainability strategy. I have. Yeah. And uh, so the first question is, uh, what excites you about um, that strategy? Mm -hmm. okay. um, yeah, I think the, the first thing that excites me is it's, it's very all-encompassing. It, it uh, you know, it deals with buildings, obviously. It deals with community. It deals with food. It deals with the, the, the social, the cultural, and I think you know, if we're going to make this thing successful and may be able to implement it, it certainly has to. Uh, it has to be that way. You, you can't design green buildings and plunk them down in the middle of a car-oriented community. That, that's not, you know, that's not going to work. And then you can't design, you know, you can't design great communities and then fill them up with monster houses. It, you know, you've got to be looking at everything from food production to the buildings to our. Know, our services and infrastructure. I know one of the other things that I, I found quite interesting was the, the setting of targets, mm -hmm. and uh, and I, I, I think that's a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, targets are, are great as long as we set them high enough. And I, as I, mean, I put that on my Facebook page the other day, I said if, if Michelangelo's quote is it we know it's how does, how does that go? It's something about you know you want to make sure you set your targets really high. And maybe not meet them, then set them really low and actually achieve them, because then you're not really getting anywhere. So it's all inclusive, and you know, if there's something there that we can shoot for. Okay. So the second question is, uh, what do you see are the challenges in implementing the strategy? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we are. We're not really quite ready to do it. Um, the at least. We are at a grassroots level, but the the people making big decisions seem to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of resistance. Uh, we're responsible for designing tens of millions of dollars worth of buildings every year, and we find that you know when they get started, they're uh, not really uh, you know they're not really focused on the you know on a high enough target or even the right goals for that matter, and. You know, while it's great to be, you know, we see so much good work being done at the grassroots level. When it you know, there's some, can be some pretty big blunders if you do a 20 million dollar building um, that it really isn't really 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 helping. And you can wipe out a lot of good work. Um, you know, at least I can if uh, if uh, you know we end up designing something that's uh, you know that's not pulling its pulling its weight. So that brings us to the third question, which is what can you, or what are you as a, an architect in your firm, how are you going to work with local government or other businesses or community organizations to make sustainability real with the Moss Valley? Okay. I think we, we're going to have to step up our uh, our participation. You can't, I can't design the whole, the whole Comox Valley and like to, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's just not, re you know, it's not able to do that. So, you know, I do one or two buildings a year. I could make them great if I could make them, you know, all green. We could lead by example. But I think we need to go beyond that. We've always had our door open for people who were had questions about buildings or, or design, development, planning, and it's, you know, hardly anyone's ever walked through it. You know, you get the odd call, but if the uh, you know, the city of Portland is going out with their RCMP building, you know, why don't you give us a call and we can help you, you know, set some high targets, set some goals, figure out what's achievable, what what can we do, what what should we be doing in terms of, you know, the biggest building that will be done here in the in the Comox Valley in the next couple of years. We want to make sure that 
you know, the, the people out there you know, can trust us as a source of, of valuable and useful information to help them with their big ticket purchases, mm -hmm. you know, meaning the, the buildings and infrastructure. And, uh, you know, that, we could do that with um, community groups, you know, but mostly you know, municipalities. And the developers, you know, they'll, they'll take care of themselves. And, and we always <laughs> will we'll never hesitate at giving them information that we think they, they need to know. Right. So I think it just engaging more, you know, letting people know that we're a resource here, that we're, you know, we are at the cutting edge of green building design and yet we never get to do one. And I think that's, you know, there's a, you know, it's a two-way street and I think we need to, we need to meet people in the middle and, and, and make sure that people know that they can, uh, you know, they can lean on us for some, some help and guidance. Okay. Thank you. Now, uh, we've got a few minutes left. Um, thanks for playing along and answering my questions. Uh, this is about a conversation, and we're hoping that people bring their own stuff to the table. So, is there something you want to uh, you know, add to the conversation about sustainability in the Comox Valley? Um, yeah. Well, there's, yeah, there's, there is, there is so much because it's, uh, it is a, a daily, a daily grind for us. You know, I'd love to see the, I'd love to see the, the big decision makers, the, the policy. Not yeah, so much the policy makers, because they're starting to get the policies right, but the, you know, it'd be nice to see some, some strong vision and leadership with the, uh, you know, with our elected officials mm -hmm. and get them, get them a little bit more committed. You know, we, we all have a, an inertia problem. You know, they're responsible for big, big, big municipal budgets. Um, you know, we'll get a client come to us with a big budget project and, we, we, it's so easy to forget how you should be doing it. You know, we know how we should design a building, and, but sometimes we get carried away and we just jump right in and start planning rooms when we should be finding a way to knit that into the, into the whole Comox Valley, make sure our projects are, are fitting in nicely. I think the same thing happens with the politicians. They're, they're, they say, oh my goodness, I've got to spend $20 million on sewer pipeline. I better, I better just get the engineer to come in and, and plan it instead of really thinking about what the policy should be. Because we need infrastructure, but do we need to do it the way we know how or the way we've done it previously? I think not. I think we need to, you know, everything's got to be, you know, got to be thought through and there's a big attitude, big attitude change you know, for all of us. Somebody described it as actually looking at everything through the lens of sustainability, like step, stepping back from yeah. All kinds of stuff. When they were talking about, I uh, think more mundane kinds of things, but you're talking about you know, very expensive, big projects. But it sounds like that's what you're saying. Yeah, I mean sustainability. I mean it's a tough one to decide or to define. You know, uh, it's not a problem. I think I said that on my Facebook site. It's not a problem to solve. It's a future to be developed together. And and you know if. You know, if a mayor wants to, you know, he's got to spend 20 million on a new sewer pipe. Come talk to me. I'll, you know, we'll let's 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 see whether it's actually even necessary. Um, let's, you know, you're planning a big building, airport expansion, what have you. Let's let's figure out how to make sustainability a part of that future, um, as opposed to, you know, and we're we're so concerned that it just costs money more to be sustainable, but it it really isn't. It's uh, it's just a change in attitude, I think, from the way we've been doing things in the past. So. Thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It was uh, it was a pleasure, and I hope to see. I look look forward to seeing how some of these things all come together, and certainly how this uh, you know this growth strategy and, and whatnot uh, how it evolves. I've got my fingers crossed. Right. Well, that that would be interesting. How the growth strategy and the sustainability strategy come together. That 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 will be a big <laughs> challenge. Will be. And I just want to say that uh, I just encourage you to take these three questions and interview your boss, your, your husband, your wife, your kids, and uh, post stuff. Just get the conversation happening. Okay. Thanks, Pat.